Good evening, brothers and sisters. Today, Holy Tuesday, let us reflect on John 13, verses 37 to 38. Peter said to him, Master, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? We know that after this pledge of allegiance, Peter thereafter denied Jesus three times. How often have we made a similar pledge to the Lord? Lord, I will follow and obey you forever. Lord, I give my life to you. Lord, I am your servant, and I will serve you for the rest of my life. We have similarly pledged our loyalty to the Lord and broken it time and time again by singing against the Lord and our brethren. This Holy Week is a good time to examine ourselves and repent of our sins against God and our fellow men. In humility, let us ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness for the times we have offended Him. And then let us take solace in His promise of forgiveness in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we acknowledge our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every wrongdoing. Kung ipinapahayag natin ang ating mga kasalanan, maaasahan natin ipatatawad sa atin ng Diyos ang mga ito. At lilinis tayo sa lahat ng ating kasamaan sapagat siya ay matuwid. Meron tayong pagmahal na Diyos na hangad lamang na tayo ay mamuhay ng matuwid at mapayapa. Let us come to Jesus now. He is our Redeemer, Savior, and Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hello and welcome to our online Eid gathering. I am Karina Tuzon. It is Holy Tuesday, brothers and sisters, and I'm sure most of you have made your own Lenten offerings or you might even have fasting, um, not only to make Lent meaningful, but also our own little way of sharing in the sufferings of Christ. Um, I remember Lent of 1998, I was diagnosed with cancer and I was undergoing chemotherapy. My facilitator told me to offer up to God whatever pain I was going through, whatever fears I had, uh, to share in the sufferings of Christ, to share in the sufferings of Jesus. Of course, I know that Jesus died for me and nothing you know, I have done compares to that. I am, rem I am reminded of um, this verse in the Bible that says, By His stripes we are healed. And so during that time, I claimed healing. I claimed one stripe for me. I claimed one lashing for me. And He healed me miraculously. So, brothers and sisters, as we enter into worship, let us acknowledge Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and that He died for all of us because of His great love for us. Let's come before the Lord in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
praise and thank you for your great love for us. We praise and thank you for your love that covers all offense. We come before you asking for your mercy and grace. We pray that you go before our gathering and allow your word to pierce our hearts. May our love for you grow deeper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let us listen to the Word of God. Let us all welcome full-time servant of the Lord, Dr. Moses Katan. This is our Holy Week special. Seven last words they said to Jesus. We have all heard about the seven last words said by Jesus on the cross. These seven last statements are, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your son, behold your mother. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst. It is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. We have all been to recollections where this has been taught. Today, following in the footsteps of the venerable Fulton Sheen, from whom I learned this, we will investigate the seven last words, not said by Jesus, but said to Jesus while he was on the cross. We will investigate what was said, who said what, and find out who they represent. The seven statements are very relatable because they were said by people during the crucifixion, persons like you and me, and there is much to learn. Five of the statements we must avoid or repent of. Two of the statements we must say because they are life-giving. Let us begin. First, the words said by the passers-by. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Take note, they taunted Jesus to destroy and rebuild the temple in three days. The problem is, they did not bother to wait for three days because after three days, Jesus actually rose from the dead. Jesus is the temple where heaven and earth meet, where divinity and humanity merge. So, sayang, if they had just waited for three days, they would have experienced the greatest event of history. But they did not bother to wait. So who do the passers-by represent today? They are those who experience the faith, but don't stay long enough to see it bear fruit in their lives. They are spectator Christians who do not let their faith grow and mature. They are those who judge Christianity without taking time to study it and experience it for themselves. They are people who spare no time to grow or mature in the faith like the seed sown on the path, who are those who hear the word without understanding it, so the evil one comes and steals what was sown. The message from the first word is this, grow, be patient, study your faith, don't quit, persevere, be faithful to the end. Second, the word said by the penitent thief. There is no mention of his name in the Bible, but he is traditionally called Hestas. 
he is known among Filipinos because of the idiom popularized by the frustrated Doña Delaila of John and Marcia. Who does? Barabas! Hestas! Hestas refers to the impenitent or bad thief. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Take note of the words, and us. Save yourself and us. Like the Filipino, Pano naman kami? This refers to those who say, What's in it for me? Or those who use religion only for worldly gain. They pray to God only for material possessions, for the stuff of this world. Their faith is conditional. I will believe you, Lord, if you answer my prayer. I will follow you, Lord, if you give me this or give me that. The message from the second word is this. Believe without conditions. Follow God unconditionally. Be a disciple. No ifs. No buts. Third, the word said by the good thief. He is also unnamed in the Bible, but tradition calls him Dismas. I lovingly call him the one who entered paradise by photo finish. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Take note, the good thief humbled himself by acknowledging that Jesus is a king who has a kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. We already know what happened. Jesus answered and said, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Who does the good thief represent? They are those who believe when others disbelieve. Those who do not seek signs, proofs, or give conditions in order to believe. They are those who defend Jesus. They are those who, while many others ask for deliverance from suffering, humbly ask for deliverance from their own sinfulness. The good thief represents the only way to enter the kingdom of God, the only way to enter heaven, which is through humility and through Jesus. Which is why one of the best prayers in the world is the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Pray and mean that as many times a day as possible, and you will become a better Christian. The message from the third word is, Be humble. Let Jesus be your Savior and Lord. Fourth, the word said by the chief priests, scribes, elders, or the religious intelligentsia. He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The religious intelligentsia represent those who know religion but do not really know the person of Jesus Christ. They have head knowledge, but no faith to let that knowledge transform their lives. Note that the chief priests and scribes knew the titles of Jesus, Savior, King of Israel, Son of God, but they used those titles to ridicule Jesus. Just like Saul, who knew about the Christian faith but still persecuted Christians. There are those who know much about the Christian faith, but mock God through lifestyles that are corrupt, immoral, or unholy. The message from the fourth word is, Use your intelligence to know God, not reject Him. Don't just know about the Christian faith. Strive to know the person of Jesus Christ and the power of His gospel. Fifth, the word said by the bystanders or mga tambay. Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. Wait, let us see if Elijah comes down to take him. 
Note the two references to Elijah. The bystanders knew their scriptures. They knew the prophets and what was foretold. But still, they mocked Jesus. So who do the bystanders represent? They are those who know their Bibles but don't follow its message. They are those who use the Bible for their own selfish agenda. They are those who do not form their lives according to the Bible, but rather selectively use the Bible according to their own wishes and desires. The message from the fifth word is, study and obey the word. Learn its life-giving message. Study its demands for a radical counterculture lifestyle. Obey what the Word of God says. Sixth, the words of the soldiers. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. The soldiers were the professional fighters of the imperial Roman army. They were the best armed forces in the world. They took pride in their soldiers' weapons and tactics. They were the executors of state-sponsored executions of those who defied Rome. In terms of torture and execution, they were also the best, and they were proud of their art and science of execution. How they could inflict the maximum pain for the longest duration in the most humiliating manner. So the words of the soldiers contained a hidden boast at how well they could torture and execute Jesus. With our state-of-the-art technology, our weaponized crucifixion, sige nga, save yourself with chuckles and jeering. Who do the soldiers represent? They represent those who side with power, even when power does what is contrary to good. Those in positions of authority, those who wield power in some way, but do evil, and even taunt or oppress those who do good. The message from the sixth word is, do not use your power to harm others. Positions of authority, influence, leadership, are for the common good. Power is given by God to be used for the greater good, especially in favor of the poor, the marginalized, and the oppressed. Do not use power to harm others. Seventh, the words of the centurion. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The centurion was a commander of a centuria or a military unit of 60 to 100 soldiers. He was a Roman, a pagan, the one who supervised the crucifixion of Jesus. The Bible does not name him, but tradition knows him as Longinus, the centurion, and also the one associated as the one who speared Jesus' hide. He was a Gentile, an unbeliever, but he was intelligent and with great observation skills. He observed Jesus. He heard the words of Jesus. He observed the three hours of darkness. He got word about the veil of the sanctuary being torn in two. He pieced all this information together and by a stroke of grace, declared in front of everyone, including his 100 soldiers, truly, this man was the Son of God. Some say he was the first convert. Some even say he was the first Christian. Who does the centurion represent? He represents those who observe, who study, who assess, and then believe. He represents those who repent, those who believe, those who undergo continuous conversion as they get to know Jesus more. He also represents those who acknowledge God before others and those who proclaim the good news. The message of the seventh word is, proclaim the good news. 
after seeing everything that Jesus has done for you, believe. And in believing, tell others about how God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Believe and spread the good news. So here is a summary of the characters and messages we can learn from the seven last words they said to Jesus on the cross. Number one, passers-by. Grow, be patient, don't quit. Number two, the impenitent thief. Follow God unconditionally. Number three, the good thief. Be humble, let Jesus be your Savior and Lord. Number four, the religious leaders, use your intelligence to know God, not reject Him. Number five, the bystanders, study and obey the Word. Number six, soldiers, use any influence and power and responsibility for the common good. Do not harm others. Number seven, the centurion, believe and proclaim the good news. This Holy Week, let us gaze at Jesus on the cross. Spend time before the cross of Christ. Just look at the crucifix. Reflect. Contemplate. What words will you say to Jesus on the cross? Thank you, Brother Moses, for blessing us with your teaching. Eden Community's vision is to spread the good news to the ends of the earth. If you want to be part of this work of evangelization, please give your tithes, love offerings, and donations to any of the following accounts. We pray for those who gave their tithes and love offerings. May the Lord bless you a hundredfold for your generosity. In Jesus' name, amen. We are back. Elim Home Base will resume face-to-face -face gatherings starting on April 19, 2022. Please bring your Elim ID and wear your face mask. Check updates at the Home Base Viber Group. Again, that's April 19 at 7 p.m. See you there! Prayer to the Lady of Elim. O oh dear Mary, Lady of Elim, sweet and pure, pray that your Son, Jesus, will, to innocence and holiness restore, the hearts and minds of long lost souls. Pray that the seed of glad tidings sown in our hearts will steer us to great hope, faith, and love. Pray for the vision and intentions of community and of the truths, that with the Lord's watchful care and generous provisions, they shall all be. Pray that the polluted world and all institutions will, from a powerful outpouring of the latter rain, experience the blessings of fresh living water, a renewal of the Spirit, and healing of our land and of all nations. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now they are for dead. Amen. You and Missions Prayer Lord, I make myself available for the Ministry of Missionary Evangelization. On my knees or in the mission field, within our borders or in foreign soil, for a single soul or for the multitudes. Empower me for abundant soul winning. By your spirit, make me an instrument of your love and mercy, a witness bold and unashamed, and an inspiring bearer of the good news. Send us the laborers, technology, and resources to reach the world. Help us break barriers, overcome obstacles, and penetrate new territories, that all the peoples of the earth may know that you are God and there is no other.
And to all those who reach, Lord, raise them up to become your true disciples. Here I am, Lord. Send me. In Jesus' name, Amen. Horatio Imperat Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Rui, pray for us. San Pedro Calumsol, pray for us. Let us pray. Thank you, Father in heaven, for sending your Son, Jesus. Thank you for His last words on the cross. And thank you for the last words that we can learn from those who spoke to Jesus on the cross. Lord, teach us to be humble. Teach us to be patient, to grow in our faith, to never quit. Help us to follow you unconditionally. Lord, help us to be humble in our faith and allow you, Jesus, to be Savior and Lord of our lives. We pray that you grant us the grace to use our intelligence to know you and never to reject you. Lord, help us to study and obey your word. And for us in positions of influence and power and responsibility, help us to serve the common good and never to harm others and Lord grant us the grace to declare that you are the Son of God and proclaim the good news we pray Lord that we may encounter you on the cross as we spend time before you gazing at your cross help us to speak words of faith to you that will bring glory to you and upbuild those around us Lastly, Lord, we pray for those who are sick, that you may heal them, that you may provide for those who are in need, and that you may open heaven to respond to the prayer requests of your people. We pray and ask all of these in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us. Looking forward to seeing everyone next week. Stay safe. God bless.
Now the past doesn't 